Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. Uh, I'm providing an update on the Phoenix 2x2 CNC router. Um, I've got it all wired up, cabled. Um, I got it running today. Got some uh, minor tweaks to do, uh, but I wanted to give you a walk around um, before I put the rest of it together and button everything up. Um, I've been pretty busy, but I did squeeze in some time the last couple of days to work on it. Uh, I would say all told I probably got 40 hours in this conversion. Uh, it's just all the work that needed to be done. Um, so if you ever take on a CNC project like this, just uh, don't underestimate the time and the budget uh, to do it and to do it right. So anyway, let me go handheld and I will show you a little walk around and then we'll hopefully run a program let you see it uh, at least cut air at this point. Okay there you see the air-cooled spindle. Um, I chose an air-cooled spindle because I really didn't want to fool with water and as infrequent that as I would use it. They do make air-cooled spindles. Um, it is a pretty quiet spindle. Uh, it's nothing like the Porter Cable uh, router motor that was on here before. Um, let me see if I can drop the Z-axis so you can see it move. So there you see the old ham coupler right there. The uh, 400 watt NEMA 23 DMM DY, uh, D, the, I'm sorry, the 400 watt NEMA 23 AC servo motor. Um, and then I did like I had suggested, I, was, I put a terminal block in here, I landed everything on the terminal block and then I took one, actually I took two cables down. Th this, I used an eight conductor cable to go down to the main cabinet and then I also used a four conductor 18 gauge. This is 22 or 24 gauge shielded cable and this is 18 gauge shielded cable. This is for future um, since I had to needle and thread it through uh, the cable carriers and so forth. I just thought I'd add uh, some extra wire. Um, there you see the x-axis servo in there and you see I moved the one inch uh, liquid tight up above from down below. That the down below would have never worked up there. It's working just fine. Um, I want to I've got a cable strap here. I think I want to strap these wires here with a a cable tie, but there nothing's in the way of the uh, ball nut uh, carrier assembly. Uh, there's the y-axis motor, and you can see where they enter. I'll walk you back there in a second. Uh, I used a piece of three-quarter inch liquid tight to that uh, junction box where all the cables come in, and then they go through that conduit into the cabinet. Um, the stock is done. Um, the monitor power computer power and the ethernet cable come down that stock and then they come around the front and the reason why they come around the front is so that I can swing this thing out of the way and not pinch the cables okay e-stop button in the front there you see the uh, centroid uh, CNC 12 uh, control up and running Um, down below here are the uh, are the AC adapters for the monitor and the computer. Both of them will work on 240, and that's what's here. It's a junction box. So if I ever had to replace these, and they have plugs on them, but if I ever replace them, I can go in here. Got 240 volts coming out of the control. Here, there's an on-off switch uh, right there. Um, I used uh, number 12 cable, which is more than enough for this. And then here's the uh, cabinet. Let me see if I can turn this. I got a fluorescent light on there. I don't know if that'll help with the glare. Um, I still have to put an amp probe on my lines to see what everything's drawing. I'll do that under a load. I've just got some 10 amp fuses in there for now. I've got to put the covers back on uh, the wireways. Um, and then up above there, you'll see a terminal block. That's where the uh, eight and the four conductors come in and then they land there and then my limit switches 
uh, land there and then I I series the three limit switches um, put jumpers in there so one went to common and then it jumps over and it jumps to the next switch then the other one goes to input one on the acorn board um, you see the uh, CNC for PC board there uh, on Acorn and then the CNC for PC boards that uh, mount to the DYN2s um, using their little Ethernet uh, cable jumpers. Um, that seems to be working well. There's the uh, toroidal power supply that I built. I bought the toroidal transformer and then I had the capacitors um, large enough uh, and the uh, bridge rectifier also large enough to work on do this project got about uh, 56 volts DC coming in the DYN2s will run at uh, 60 volts so we're good there e-stop contactor there that breaks power to both the positive and the negative uh, DC supply from the power supply and then it goes down as I uh, described previously it goes down there and then it's distributed distributed to the uh, DYN2 drives. Um, that's about it for the cabinet. Um, this is a 24 by 24 cabinet. Um, I have a little bit of DIN rail up here if I need to put another relay in. I have DIN rail over there for more relays. I have my six channel NPN uh, relay board. This is uh, a Revision 3 hardware. Um, acorn board so it did not come with the uh, the relays but uh, anyway that relay board is controlling the uh, the Huanyang GT2 or the Huanyang GT uh, VFD I'll show you that in a second so there's the conduit that drops cables down into the cabinet and then uh, I've got a, a cable a conduit here just to get uh, entry for the Ethernet cable and the e-stop cable out. Let's see if I can get around here without knocking stuff around. Everything's a disaster right now. Okay, here's the back. Here you see the one inch uh, Ultraflex liquid tight conduit. Not that there's gonna be any moisture here. Moved it from here, moved it up there, worked great. I was able to get the four cables, um, two encoder cables and two motor power cables for uh, Z and X through this. Um, so this was a good move on my part. Um, I took my time, got it through this cable track, and then I fed it through here, and then fed it out through this uh, junction box, fed everything out, and then I looped it on through, and in here. And then here, the uh, there's the uh, limit switch for the Y axis and there's the y-axis servo motor they come in through this three-quarter inch seal tight I popped a hole in this box and dropped it in so that all worked out really well let's go around to the VFD again you look here on the floor this is the disaster I need to clean up yet today um, can't, I'm not going to do any more until I clean up this mess So there's the Huan Yang uh, GT VFD. I still got to put the cover on the bottom. I left it off in case I had to make any changes. Um, that's not the most ideal way to uh, cable that drive, but it's my machine. Um, you know, theoretically, it would have been better to put that in a cabinet and uh, cover it up and vent it so it stays cool. That would be the right way. But it's going to work out for me, I think. Um, and it is working now. It's wired up, it's powered up, and it's running. I did test it, run a program. I do have a vacuum pump that my uh, friend Brian Lamb gave me uh, for the vacuum table. I still got to sort that out. And that's just a junction box back into the control cabinet uh, if I want to get power to this thing uh, out here so I can use this vacuum pump. Um, I'm new to vacuum tables and that sort of thing. I do want to put a shot back or something in here and uh, I'm gonna get a dust collection shoe Amazon has a Powermatic uh, dust collection shoe that that will fit this 80 millimeter body that's an ER16 uh, spindle should be plenty for what I want to do 
Uh, so that's pretty much an overall walk around. Let's uh, let's go ahead and watch this thing just cut some air. So I've got this uh, F2 CNC. It's a stock program that came with the Centroid software or something to play around with. Uh, it does some bizarre things. Uh, let me show you what it looks like first. Uh, it's an eagle, so it, it cuts this out just fine, but when it starts doing the stars, it the Z retracts up and then drops down for each corner, each leg of that star, and then it comes up, so it takes a long time. So I'll probably cut the video off when it gets to the stars. So anyway, let me just show you this run. I've already homed the machine, and it homes fine, and set part zero. So uh, let's, uh, let's run this thing. Okay, I've got it. I've got tool three set for an engraving bit. You can see the outline. The trail is on. Show you the tool path. There you see a Z going up and down. Again, it's just a stock program, it's something to play with and just see the machine run. It's not, I don't exactly know how it was uh, programmed uh, or why. It doesn't really need to retract all the way up like that. But, you know, it gives you an idea that the machine is running. Uh, I'm direct driving the screws and my screws are five turns per inch. Um, so that was pretty easy to set up. Go to G code. Trying to get a shot of both the console and the machine doing its thing. Uh, I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of this little 2x2 two two router. It's, it's small enough uh, that it doesn't take up a lot of space in the shop. Um, anything bigger like a 4x4 four four would have taken up a lot of uh, floor space. But uh, I think it'll do what I want to do. I kind of asp have aspirations of having it drill my back plates and then I'll just tap them so I don't have to do that by hand. I program some typical ones and just put a sheet of aluminum down and let it drill the holes for all the mounting points. That's a thought anyway. You see it's doing the stars there now. Each leg it, it retracts to the Z positive position and comes down. I don't know, maybe it was a it's, well, it's, there's how it tells you. It's coming down to zero. It's going up. Maybe the part was two inches thick. I'm not, I'm not sure. That's, that's what it's doing. But anyway. So that's it for part four. Um, I don't know if there'll be a part five or not. If there is. I'll do one of it cutting something so you can see it actually cutting more than just air. So I hope you enjoyed this little uh, video series on what I was up to. Uh, I've got more projects coming, but this is something I wanted to get out of the way before the next job started. All right, until next time, uh, be safe, have fun, talk to you soon.